We have Eric, and uh, he's going to be talking about federated eCash and beyond. Uh, that's a very promising project. So I don't know you, but I'm really looking forward to see what he has to say. Let's all welcome him. Come on. Yeah, hello. Uh, it's great to see so many uh, familiar faces here and so many new faces and some covered faces. I really appreciate it. I'm not the only one. So um, yeah, today I want to talk about federated eCash and beyond. Uh, why beyond? Uh, I gave the federated eCash presentation quite a few times now. And to be honest, I want to spice it up a bit. Like uh, today I want to talk about federations. Like uh, not only about eCash federations, but federations in general. So let's start. Oh. It's doing double clicks, I think. OK, so what are the federations in Bitcoin today? Like, we have the Liquid Network, which was the first federation of all and which coined the term federation on Bitcoin. Then, at the beginning, there was RSK. Like, RSK also used the federated PEC mechanism to um, connect, like, the EVM based sidechain to Bitcoin. But they're not doing this anymore. And last but not least, there is Fedimint, which is my project that implements a, fe a Xiaomi eCash mint on top of a federation, such that it distributes the necessary trust. So, but what is a federation really? Uh, in simple terms, a federation is just a multi-sig Bitcoin wallet that is operated by a bunch of people. Like in Liquid, we call these people functionaries. In Fedimint, we call them guardians because they are protecting their users. And the users are the second important part of the system. Because these, uh, this multisig wallet and these guardians allow users to deposit money into the multisig and also withdraw it. And in between, there happens something very important. There is accounting. And that's where all the magic happens. The um, accounting is essentially what um, makes Liquid different from uh, Fediment, or what makes uh, any other federation different from any, like, uh, yeah, from different federations. And that's not the only thing, though. Um, just because, like, you might be thinking, if it's just a multisig with some rules applied, then that's really simple. But it's not as simple. Like, why are we making such a fuss about it? Why are we building, like, a big software which is Fediment and which has uh, many thousands lines of code? Uh, it's because we, have, we still have some problems that you might know from Bitcoin. For example, the double spend problem. And let's imagine you have a federation of two or four, like where I need two of the federation members to sign off on a transaction to spend from a multisig wallet. Then you could imagine a case where a user has one Bitcoin in a wallet, in a wallet A, and says, hey, I want to withdraw from this in-federation wallet to an external address. But he gives a different external address to different parts of the federation. And if they do not communicate with each other, they might just end up sending like twice the amount they should be sending. And uh, that's like a break of the security model. So we need to fix this. And that's like a big part of federations. How do you fix this? With consensus. Like in Bitcoin, you know consensus is achieved by proof of work. Like you have to solve a complicated cryptographic puzzle and then you append blocks onto a blockchain. But what it actually does is it um, puts an order on transactions. Like transactions are ordered in a time chain, we also like to call it. <laughs> so the good thing is we don't have to um, reinvent consensus. Like actually for federations, we have a fixed set of participants. And in that case, the consensus problem, which is also called the Byzantine fault tolerance consensus problem, uh, was already solved in the 80s by Leslie Lamport. And then many other papers built on top of his work. And uh, like there are existing algorithms, if you have a fixed set of people, that want to agree on a certain order of items like transactions, then you can use that. And what we do now is if the user wants to send a transaction A, like we had it before, then the user transmits it to one or more of the federation members, and they then engage in the consensus protocol. And what the consensus protocol does is it ensures that everyone gets the same order of transactions and the same transactions 
which is really important. Like it doesn't ensure that every transaction gets into the consensus output, but the most important thing is that everyone gets the same output because then what we can do is we process these transactions deterministically and everyone will be always in the same state. That's also why uh, BFT consensus is often referred to as a replicated state machine because you can think of it quite simply as a state machine. And every state change, which is a transaction in our case, uh, has to be replicated to all the members, otherwise they diverge, that doesn't work. Like then uh, one federation member might think like, uh, we have to withdraw to address A and another wants to withdraw to address B and it's huge chaos, nothing works. But if we can agree on the order of transactions and the order of state changes, then uh, our system works and works securely so. So how do we um, leverage these technologies in Fedimint? Uh, Fedimint is a um, federated eCash mint that uh, is essentially a scaling me mechanism for Bitcoin. It's a privacy mechanism. And um, when you interconnect it with Lightning, it's like a really interoperable kind of private Lightning wallet, I'd say. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on it today because uh, I already explained it in quite some depth in other presentations. Um, so just a quick review. Like what it all builds on is something called blind signatures. A blind signature is a way to acquire a signature on a message without uh, revealing the message to the signer. You might ask, why would you ever do that? Like it sounds like a really bad idea to sign a message that you haven't seen, but there's a really easy fix for that. You say like this uh, key with which I sign is not necessarily like a, a key that means like I agree with this message. No, it only means that each signature I produce with this key is worth a certain amount of value. For example, one Satoshi. And what you can then do is you just choose, uh, choose a random message and uh, like each random message signature pair is worth a certain amount of money. And then you can easily come up with a protocol like where you give Bitcoin and um, to like a central entity called a mint. And in return, this mint engages in like this blind signing protocol. And in the end, you end up with like these messages with signatures and they are worth a certain amount of money. Like here we give like two Bitcoin to the mint if each um, blind signature pair was worth like let's say one Bitcoin, then you would get like two of these pairs. We also call them eCash tokens. And that's essentially IOU, like a IOU that um, Mint owes you some Bitcoin. Now, you want to spend these, you can go to the Mint again, tell it, hey, I want to spend these eCash tokens. Can you please check if they are unspent? Because like they might already be spent. So it just checks in a big list of all the eCash tokens that were already spent. and if they weren't spent yet, then you can, for example, get new eCash tokens issued. And um, yeah, in that way, you make sure that nobody double spends you. Or you could also specify a Bitcoin address to which the specific amount should be sent. Like um, you could say, I'm giving the eCash mint one of these eCash tokens. Since it's signed, the mint knows that it received the Bitcoin for it once, and then it will send me one Bitcoin on chain again. So that's the basic concept of it. Um, so now the interesting part begins. How do we federate this? Like so far this was all like the old Xiaomi stuff. It's not all that interesting. We know how to do this since the 80s. But when you put this into a federation, in a federated setting, you suddenly run into a few problems. And the biggest one is instead of using a line signature scheme, where you have like one signer. You need, need to use a threshold blind signature scheme where T out of N signers have to cooperate to build a signature together. And if less than T of these parties cooperate, they cannot build a signature. Like that's really important because otherwise like these T minus one peers could uh, like lead to silent inflation and we don't want that. We don't want to go fractional reserve with like less than the maximum allowed amount of people are uh, malicious. Like that's the whole point of federations, that a certain amount of the um, federation members can be malicious. And so that's why we use threshold cryptography here. And there exist uh, threshold blind signature algorithms. They are described in literature, so you can just plug them in there. 
And like that's a really important uh, point. Like generally when dealing with federations, we have to use threshold cryptography. And that's like one of the examples. And otherwise nothing changes really. Like you still issue eCash tokens, you spend eCash tokens, all the same, like the centralized model. But now you have it to just distribute it or multiple people. Um, then a second version of a federation that I want to talk about is elements where the most uh, well-known implementation or instantiation thereof is liquid. Uh, but I specifically put elements here because like my graphics will diverge a bit from how liquid is actually deployed because it's a really fancy protocol and like it would get way too messy if I wanted to draw it all. So I just want to explain the basics of federated sidechains essentially. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> This is a little bit buggy. I want to go back. <sighs> okay, Next, what is a federated sidechain? Um, in Bitcoin, you append blocks to the blockchain by solving a complicated proof of work puzzle, like you hash, and uh, if you find a hash that has enough leading zeros in simple terms, then you're allowed to append to the public ledger. But with a federated sidechain, instead of having proof of work, you have proof of authority. And what it means is, like, the federation members shown on top, like, they do not only hold the keys to the Bitcoin that are in the federation wallet, but they also hold keys with which they sign new blocks that they want to append to the blockchain. And that way, you, you do not need to spend energy on, like, mining these blocks because there's also no block reward. You're not creating a new shitcoin, so you cannot pay out anything. So you have to make do with like much cheaper means of um, consensus, which is like the BFT consensus we spoke about earlier. And so you can create a sidechain which has its own rules, which uh, you can freely define. For example, in Elements, you have confidential assets, which is great, uh, like gives you some privacy. You um, have a bunch of new opcodes that allow you to build covenants and like way stronger smart contracts that way. So it's a great playground, essentially, for developers to uh, experiment with changes that we might want in Bitcoin one day. And like that's actually, like Liquid and Elements was the inspiration for uh, my federated eCash research. But now that we've spoken about like the um, already existing schemes, I'd really like to go into um, like some new schemes that like nobody has implemented yet that I think would be useful and I hope you think so too, and maybe you can come up with something new. Like that's what I want to uh, tell you with this slide. Um, so on a really basic level, what I already explained is that whatever you do in a like, centralized manner, you can essentially also do in a federation. Like the only thing you need is if there's any secret data involved, like if you have any private keys, if you have any like password secrets, whatever, like you have to find a way to deal with them in a like threshold cryptographic manner because there isn't a single party that can hold the key anymore. Like you have to split up the key. If you want to sign something, then you need a threshold signature protocol, like Frost, for example. If you want to uh, encrypt something, then you'd rather do some Shamir secret sharing. And yeah, uh, using these primitives, you can build quite a bunch of uh, interesting things, I think. Like the first thing would be uh, signet sidechains. Like it's really similar to the um, general concept of sidechains. Uh, like we already have with liquid and elements, but like democratizing it a bit. Like uh, if we had an open source sidechain backend that everyone can spin up their own fork of Bitcoin Core, like as a sidechain, then for example, we could settle like disputes. Like do we need this opcode first? Do we need that opcode first? What soft forks do we want to do? Like just spin up a sidechain and see what people do with it. Like that's a much uh, easier way, I think, to go about these things than like the political process uh, that is happening otherwise. So I think that could be um, like a great benefit. And if that anyone wants to build this, like Fediment as um, software architecture is very modular. So you could build this today with uh, like relatively low effort. That's why I'm actually talking about this. Like uh, when you look at Fediment, it's not only federated eCash, it's a generalized federation framework and so any of the things that I mentioned here, I'd really like people to build. And um, yeah, the, the second thing 
that uh, would be interesting are dead man switches. Like, what happens if, well, you die? Then uh, you might want to transfer some money. You might want to inform someone that, uh, like, there exists some secret contract with someone else that might have led to your early demise. Um, like, maybe you are McAfee and want to tell the world, like, I didn't kill myself. And so that would be a very interesting thing to build in a federation because you don't want to have a single point of failure and both in the direction of a hostile government could take out your deadman switch provider as well as the deadman switch provider could decrypt your message early. So if you have a federation, like a number of the members has to collaborate to actually decrypt your message or to send your money. So that gives you much more confidence that it will go the way you uh, expect it to go. The third thing here, that's something we have explored already in um, Fedimint and uh, will be something that uh, Fedi will be working on, the company Obi, uh, Justin Moon and I have founded, and that is community backups, which is something really, really uh, exciting. And if you have a federation where you already have second party trust relationships to uh, like the federation guardians, then what you can do is you just Shamir secret share your seed, your M mnemonic to this federation. And if you ever lose your phone, for example, then you could um, go to each single one of them, do like your KYF, know your friend uh, authentication procedure. Like they probably know, know your nice face, they uh, know what you like for tea, and so they will know that it's you. <laughs> so you, they will give you back one of your encrypted shares and if you have key out of n of them, then you can recover your seed phrase. So that's something that I think is very, um, very mighty for many people because, to be honest, few people do backups right today, and like it's really a daunting, a daunting task. Like you can spend days just to prepare to set up your multisig, set up your backups right, and so I think for most people, having community backups would be a great idea. Last but not least, uh, I call it DAOs here, but it's more about like generalized smart contracts. Like uh, how do we uh, imagine our Bitcoin companies, uh, like Bitcoin organizations to be organized? Like we need some way to both uh, issue equity, I guess, and as well as uh, control like our assets. And so on a federation, you can do all that like without polluting any chain. And you can implement really, really complicated rules that you couldn't implement otherwise. You can even deal with secret data as we saw before. Like you d can't only um, lock funds. You can also actually lock secrets and put secrets out there for sale, which might lead to other interesting uh, ideas for marketplaces, for example. So all in all, there's a lot you can do with federations. And I'd really love to explore other ideas together with you. So if you have any cool uh, idea or want to discuss uh, some part that I didn't go into deeply enough because like I, I kept it really short. Didn't want to bore the people that always saw all the other presentations before. Then that will be a, a great time now to just discuss. And yeah, thank you for listening. <laughs>So two questions. Uh, the first one is, uh, you mentioned the dead man switch uh, situation, and uh, you say that uh, we could have a dead man switch not just for Bitcoins, but also for generic information like uh, Mechafelix. One, one question I have about that is that with Bitcoin, I, it's easy to imagine how I could revoke the dead man switch. So if I'm not dead, I will just uh, move the Bitcoin elsewhere so the switch cannot, uh, cannot turn on. But with information, after, I mean, if the federation will reveal it after a certain time, how can I trustlessly revoke it? I mean, I, I have to trust that the federation behave very, very well about that, or, or, or that's a, just a trust model, so who cares? I, I don't, but, but that's an, an interesting question for me. The second one is, uh, do you think that in this framework where you consider different federation model and different trade-offs, for example, fedimins are way more flexible than liquid, but they may have less uh, anti-inflation guarantees and anti-fractional reserve guarantees. They have less proof of reserve. Do you think we could also put uh, uh, generalized lightning channels like uh, L2 multi-party channels? Are, 
aren't L2 multi-party channels a kind of federation or channel factories maybe where you can also add other other nodes? Isn't yeah, do you think it would be useful to put them all on the same spectrum to 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 check trade-offs? So uh, to your first question, uh, thanks. Uh, that were a lot of questions actually. <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> The first question, yes, you cannot revoke a secret that you want to be revealed eventually. Like, uh, you have to uh, show me a secret chair to the Federation, essentially. Like, it's called threshold encryption. It works a little bit differently. But the problem is, once you're encrypted to a certain set of people, like, you cannot take away information again. That doesn't work. Like, like it's just fundamental law of uh, information theory, I guess. Um, to the second question, um, like, yes, we have a really wide uh, array of uh, like trade-offs we are experiencing here with, uh, like, on the one side, there's something like Liquid, which has great auditability, uh, still some good privacy, uh, and uh, some inherent scaling uh, like limitations as every blockchain has. And on the other hand, you have something like uh, Fedimint, in the sense that it's like a federated eCash implementation, not just a general framework for federations, where you have the best privacy you could ever get, essentially. You have uh, better scalability to some degree, uh, but you lose the auditability. Like, that's an inherent trade-off you can make. And, for example, you could imagine that you we gain the auditability by implementing something like a, a federated Monero or a federated Zcash. That would totally work. But uh, the problem there would be you lose scalability again because it's a blockchain. And it's even worse with these privacy coins because yeah, you, you need to download the entire blockchain to even make transactions, privately at least. Otherwise, you have to use some third-party service that leaks a lot of information about you. Um, so there is this wide variety, and I actually like people to explore that. Like maybe if, if you feel uh, really bored and you could implement like a Zcash on Fediment. I think it's a huge task and probably not worth my time right now, but <laughs> it would be cool to have. Like it's just more choices is better for everyone. Um, to the last question about uh, lighting channels, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, so you could, uh, in theory, have the, the Federation could hold its own lighting channels. We don't do this right now because it's uh, really complicated. Um, but in theory, in, once you have Taproot, you can uh, hide the fact that you are doing a threshold signature scheme internally. Like uh, with Schnorr signatures, they have these nice uh, arithmetic properties. Um, they're linear and you can just like, combine them and it, it works really well. Um, so in theory, the Federation could have its own channels, uh, but in practice it might not even be uh, desirable because then the Federation would have to do channel management and that's something where you need to interact with the network and you have to react. And like currently in the Fediment model as federated eCash uh, Mint, you start the software and it runs. You just have to keep it powered up. That's all you have to do, so it's really simple. And uh, especially in the like target markets that we want to deploy to uh, in the global south uh, as FEDI, there, well, uh, you don't want people to manage channels. But as the wider Fediment project, it would be awesome to have this uh, channel integration. Like There are like uh, a thousand things we want to do, and that's one of them. <laughs> so <laughs> let's see when we get to it. Unfortunately, uh, we run out. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we don't have more time. So thank you, Eric. Uh, it was an amazing talk. <laughs> uh, Fifteen minutes uh, coffee break, and we will be back.